Today we're replacing an AC compressor. This car's been in a slight accident. Happens to be an 05 Hyundai Ac Accent. Someone replaced the headlight, the bumper cover, and the hood, but the con condenser, which is in front of the radiator, was also damaged. It's punctured, doesn't hold the Freon anymore, and needs to be replaced. On the 05 Accent, it, this condenser attaches with two bolts and two pegs. Remove the two bolts, then lift it out of the pegs. We've already disconnected the two hoses and it comes right out. It's very similar on other cars as well. It's always mounted in front of the radiator and there are two to four bolts and it comes right out. Two hoses, that's it. I'm going to loosen the radiator just two bolts and le try and attempt to lean it back and then remove the condenser, reinstall the used one I bought and just put the radiator back on. The condenser has two lines attached. They're held on by these two nuts. And so before I remove it, I'm going to disconnect the lines. Okay, I removed the nuts. Now it's just a matter of lifting the connection out. One came out easily. The other one's a little stuck. Okay. From the accident, it's a little bit mangled. The bolt doesn't line up anymore, but I'm going to take it out anyway. And you can see where the horn pushed through, when the car was hit, the horn pushed through the condenser and punctured it. This is the back side of it and the holes on the front where the horn hit it. Now the bolt on the other side. Now let's see if we can lift it out. It's disconnected. The radiator looks like it's mostly out of the way. And there it is. You see exactly where the horn went through the AC condenser and punctured it, making it leak. On this AC condenser, there are two rubber vibration insulators that you need to make, be sure and put back on. You can see the holes where those rubber insulators and the pegs slide in. And so I'm just going to push the radiator back and drop it into place. Okay, now I'm going to put it into place. Just need to line up the pegs and the holes. Go ahead. Now the pegs are in the holes at the bottom and I just need to put in each of the two bolts and reattach the two lines. Before you reattach the lines, inspect the O-ring. Connectors look like this. This is the one I chopped off at the junkyard. But it's just basically a green O-ring. And as long as what you're putting back is intact, 
you put a little bit of lubrication around it, whether it's some of the oil that's just around the area or some Vaseline or something so that it doesn't damage the o-ring when you push it back in it should be fine then tighten the nut back up I inspected the green o-rings on each of the pipes they were fine put a little lubrication on, on them slid them back into place and just tighten the nuts doesn't take much okay the passenger side bolt lined up perfectly so that was easy after the accident though this one's not, not going to line up and it's not worth the trouble of, re of drilling a new hole and making a new bolt hole I'm just going to use a zip tie to reattach it now I need to reattach the radiator mount Tighten it up and we'll be ready to vacuum test the AC system. Next step is to attach a gauge set. There are two ports. I already took the caps off. High pressure and low pressure. If you don't own one of these, you can buy one. They're relatively inexpensive, obviously. They're available lots of places online, etc. Or you can rent one at uh, one of the local parts houses they give your basically you pay the purchase price and then they let you return it without any charge so you get to rent it for free small Schrader valve inside that's similar to what you would find on a bicycle tire so this quick connector goes into place and then just turn this down gently enough to open the Schrader valve same with the other one snaps into place open the Schrader valve Gently, don't bend it or break it, it's delicate. This is a vacuum pump. You can pick one of these up at the parts store on a rental basis as well. Um, the vacuum evacuates all of the air and it, as the vacuum develops in the system, this dial will approach 30 inches of mercury vacuum. I have an old pump. About as good as I can get is 25 inches of mercury vacuum. So we're there. I'm going to seal it off and turn off the pump and then give it 15 minutes or so to see if it can hold the vacuum. It's still holding. The vacuum gauge hasn't moved. So that's a pretty good indication we don't have a leak. I'm going to go ahead and charge up the system. Okay, now we'll see if it works. Oh, that's good. 